When I have guests over, we run into a very common issue. The Android phones cannot connect to our internet because I don't have that Samsung hub. And then similarly, when I take my Dell laptop over to my friend's house, I can connect to the internet through his universal PC hub, but that's really only good for basic internet browsing. I can't get internet to all those various individual apps that I use a lot of. It's a good thing that most of us are on iPhones and Macs because Apple built that internet access point so seamlessly into their internet connected devices. So iPhones can connect to the internet just about anywhere through those various Apple hubs. What a world that would be, right? This is the Hubs Conversation, part two. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. Luckily, we don't live in that world. There is no conversation around, will my device not connect to this Wi-Fi due to the brand or the protocol? Most typically, the conversation is, what's the Wi-Fi password? And even that's gotten a lot easier to share. And in most houses, that's one single device for all of those Wi-Fi devices. You get where I'm going with this? I've said before that I'd like to draw a hard line between all of my smart home devices and every other device that walked through my front door. This is why I try to keep all of my smart home devices off of my Wi-Fi network, opting for another protocol like Zigbee or Thread. The ideal future is that Matter supports every device type, and when exposed to Apple Home, every function the brand intended is present and configurable. This, of course, requires a unified approach from all parties, and I'm sure there's a roadmap for that. And when we get there, the title of this video wouldn't be an analogy or a stretch by any means. Your Apple TV and your router can sit side by side in a dual system of connectivity between all of your Wi-Fi devices and all of your Matter devices. And let's just say that this future has all Matter over Thread devices. But until then, we have different protocols, we have proprietary hubs, and a higher barrier to entry than is really needed for wide adoption, whether that be cost-based or even knowledge-based. So if that's just the way that it is, is it now just more about navigating it in the most efficient way, finding a way to not worry so much about that protocol or buying that proprietary hub? I think there's a solution, but we need another hub. But what hub exists that supports all the protocols, allows you to ditch all those proprietary hubs, is extremely user-friendly and is relatively affordable. There isn't one. It doesn't exist, even with Home Assistant, which I'll come back to that. This still isn't the Home Assistant video. The Homey Pro is a universal hub, which supports the most common smart home protocols and is compatible with thousands of devices. So can this device sit side by side with your Wi-Fi router and essentially act as your smart home router. In my last video, I used several hub examples, some that I own and some that I avoided. The Hue Bridge, the SwitchBot Hub 3, the Ecobee Premium, the Acara G410, and the Ring Base Station. These are the ones that I have. And then the other examples, the Lutron Hub, the Flick Hub, and the IKEA Hub. I added every device in my house into the Homey Pro. So now, which hubs can I ditch? As I explained in the last video, some of these hubs need exclusion because they are completely necessary for other purposes. The Ring Base Station and the Ecobee Premium, they can't go anywhere. But every single Hue bulb can connect to the Homey Pro via Zigbee, and all of my SwitchBot devices can connect via Bluetooth, with the exception of the door roller shades. Those still needed the SwitchBot hub for Homey Pro integration for some reason. And then there's an official Acara integration, so if I decide to change my Acara doorbell in the future, I don't have to worry about any of my Acara child devices. They will be able to connect to the Homey Pro directly. So it could replace most of my hubs, but unfortunately it couldn't replace the Lutron hub or the Flick hub, as those integrations, which do exist, still required the proprietary hub. And then all of my Matter over Thread devices. The Homey Pro is a Matter controller and a Thread border router. So if you're starting your smart home new, you could start in Homey Pro and then integrate all those devices into Apple Home later for that front end control. Or if you're like me and your smart home already lives in Apple Home, you can integrate all of those Matter devices into the Homey Pro using pairing mode because all of these Matter devices have multi-admin support. But why would I care about adding all of my Matter devices into the Homey Pro if they didn't require a proprietary hub in the first place, outside of the thread border router? Homey Pro is a powerful automation machine, which Apple Home currently is not. So maybe you could take all the automations in this tab 
and replace them with what they call flows in Homey Pro. Let's create one of my favorite automations from Apple Home in Homey Pro. When we walk into the nursery and long press the button on the switch, it will toggle one of two scenes, either wake up Connor or nap time. This depends on the current position of the blinds. If they're closed or mostly closed, then the wake up scene runs. If they're open, then the nap time scene runs. In Apple Home, this takes a little mental gymnastics to get just right, creating the scenes, converting the button press to a shortcut, and then building the shortcut as a toggle situation. In Homey Advanced Flows, I start with when the button is pressed and put in a variable, like the current position of the blinds, and then have two separate sets of outcomes depending on the blinds position. This is more streamlined logic for the same outcome. Not to mention this visual for creating automations is amazing. This only works if every device in your house is compatible with Homey Pro, which most of them were, but not surprisingly, my GE Sync devices were not compatible. And if I did decide to move all of my automations over to Homey Pro, I'd have to get pretty creative on how to integrate those GE Sync devices, which are exposed to Apple Home via HomeBridge. A quick note on HomeBridge, which I've been largely keeping out of this conversation, I do use it to integrate some incompatible devices into Apple Home. And I was looking to Homey Pro to replace HomeBridge altogether. And I was able to find an integration for just about all of those devices. But when it came to bringing in these devices into Apple Home from Homey Pro, these were the only unsupported devices. Some of these devices include our washer, our dryer, Lisa's Dexcom, and even a Wacom LAN plugin for my PC. So these devices do exist in Homey Pro for the automation purposes, and then separately they exist in Apple Home via HomeBridge for that front end control. All of this is now a bit messy. And then on the price front, the Homey Pro is $400. So while it might replace some of your proprietary hubs, it's really just decluttering because it's not saving you a ton of money unless you planned on buying a dozen very expensive hubs. So can this device be your smart home router going toe to toe with your Wi-Fi router, handling half your home's connectivity and all of your home's automations? Kind of, but you'll still have to be as researched and as purposeful as ever with your purchases. I'm gonna continue experimenting and see what it's like having Homey Pro as the back end and Apple Home as that front end user interface. Oh, and then there's also the Homey Pro Mini, which supports fewer protocols uh, and it's half the price. And then there's the Homey Bridge, which brings back in those lost protocols. But the existence of both of these devices completely torpedoes the concept of this video. I said I would come back to Home Assistant and I'm starting to get it a little bit. Tell me why you would pick Home Assistant over Homey Pro. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.